Well, it's good to see everybody. Uh, it's great to be back and great to be playing back at home. We've got a really good opponent coming here to Reynolds Center tomorrow in Loyola, Chicago. Of course, we've had a lot of recent success and a team that's off to a good start. Busy time. Um, we've had some times in our schedule where we've had a number of days in between games, and this is our first time having a quick turnaround. So quick, uh, lots of focus, lots of prep in, in getting ready for Loyola, Chicago tomorrow. So looking for, again forward to this opportunity to be back at home. After the hot start to the year, a couple disappointing kind of finishes, what what did you learn from your team in that? And kind of how do you feel they responded kind of from their first adversity this season? Yeah, and that's, you know, that's what you expect when you when you go on the road too. And, and you go into somebody else's gym and environment and um, both games, as I look back, very highly contested, you know, right there down the stretch, have chances to, to extend a lead uh, or finish the game, especially at Little Rock. And those are the types of things that we've got to get better at. We've got um, so many guys that are going through it the first time and figuring out what is it really going to take to, to win those types of ball games. So, those are things that we can continue to grow from. We had an extensive film session yesterday. Couldn't do a ton of stuff out on the floor. We did a little bit uh, in getting ready for Loyola, but certainly always taking a look at, there's a number of ways to win games. What is the best way for us? And how do we go out and make sure that we're consistent in doing that? I was gonna say with, oh, sorry. with so many new pieces, how long do you think it takes for you to figure out the style that fits this team and kind of its its personality, the way that it's going to work out this year, and how valuable are playing against different styles of different teams to kind of help you figure it out? Always look at our non-conference schedule as one to help us prepare for our league schedule. That, that's the, the most important thing. Um, of course, all year is important in basketball. Uh, you know, it's, it, it's, but it is a process of, hey, let's, let's figure our team out. And each non-conference opponent gives us an opportunity to see different styles, teams that play zone, teams that play man. There's so many different ways to play. But it's going to be ongoing. We've had, um, you know, we have Keeson Willis now just getting healthy. So that adds to our team, which is a positive thing. It's a change, though, and we've got to continue to grow. We've got guys that are improving and have potential to earn more playing time. That's ongoing, and we want that. So we're going to continue to adjust and continue to find ways to help us operate most efficiently and put ourselves in position to, to win games. Yeah, Coach, how do you handle that part of it from a coaching standpoint? You've got so many guys that, and a lot of guys that are contributing, and then you've got minutes, and how do you – it's just, how do you figure it out? You, is it just by the flow, who's, who's flowing and what, what's, I mean, how do you figure out your lineup and do you play eight, do you play 10? Do you, how's that gone so far? So historically, I've uh, always been a big believer in, <coughs> especially early, giving guys opportunities to play that have been earned in practice. And we grade practice in a number of different ways. Um, we've posted the winners at times, we call it the Kane way, and we grade out so many different things and just showing not just who's, who's making shots, but who's rebounding, deflecting, who's winning parts of their drills. And let those stats and let um, that evaluation process turn into minutes and games. We'd like to play with some depth. We'd like to develop our young guys. Um, that becomes a little bit more challenging as the year goes on, and, but it gives guys an opportunity to compete for those minutes. But every team and every uh, even segment of the year has its own heartbeat and its, its own personality. And we, we take very much into trying to develop our group so that if you do have injury, you do have illness, you have anything, you've got a next man up mentality where they've seen the floor at least in a little bit. But it's, I, I think, minutes – and playing time and lineups is the most challenging thing. We've got some analytics that we do to see which is our best defensive lineup, offensive lineup. And in basketball, you've got to be able to do both. And so it's trying to figure out over time and against what opponent who's going to be best.
Coach, down the backstretch in the last two games, you know, the other team has come up with a win. But who has played well in crunch time as you analyze the tape? Who's played well? We've had a number of guys do some do some good things. I mean, there's overall, of course, as a group, we've got to play better down, down the stretch in the last five minutes of the game. Um, but you, you look at both games that we've lost, we've done it in different ways. Um, you know, the previous game, it was a, a barrage of threes that were hit in a, in a stretch that, and we weren't able to answer. Uh, in the other particular game, we were in, in, a, in a stretch where they were getting offensive rebounds and, and getting extra opportunities that way. So, you know, I wouldn't put all the credit on one guy or, or even a couple of guys of who's playing well. We need to play, play better. You know, those are the things that we're looking at in these last two games. But I think we're getting contributions from a number of different guys. You see that in our box scores. You see that in just evaluating the tape. Now we've got a number of guys doing some things to help us. Over the last probably four or five years, Loyola Chicago's become well known as a mid-major and the runs that they've made in the tournament. But every season, they've, they've looked a little bit different. What stands out about this team for them? Well, this is a very old team. They're 30th in the country in experience right now. They've got a number of fifth-year guys that they've brought into their program. Of course, we played them last year. They've got some guys back from that team. Uh, uh, Alston, their front court player, had been out but just came back. Uh, he had an injury and played very well. They played extremely well as a group against Harvard in their recent win. But the thing that I think is each team at times, especially you know, Coach Valentine was an assistant there and has been a part of that program for a long time. They're going to play really, really hard, and they're going to be very, very physical. This particular team has a number of guys that shoot threes. They run a lot of different actions to try to create dribble penetration and uh, three-point shots. And, um, and then having some guys that will actually get down by the basket, too, and just be grimy down there. So they pose a lot of different problems. And they've been stingy defensively, too. So all those things, that's led them to have a Final Four and a Sweet 16 and another tournament appearance all in the last um, you know, five, six years. And so really good team coming in here. We're excited about that opportunity. Coach, defensively, are you pleased with the progress? First four games, really good. Last couple of games, you played some pretty good, you know, a couple of pretty good teams that score the ball well. What is your progress like at this point defensively? Yeah, we you know last two games and and we look at it in a couple of different ways. Um, there's the overall goal, and of course the overall goal is to score one more point than the other team. But when you when you look at the actual defense, we we really want to hold people under one point per possession. In the last two games we haven't done that. Uh, in this last game in particular, we we allowed too many three point shots. Um, we actually allowed a team to, that doesn't get to the free throw line very much get to the free throw line a lot. Um, the other game was offensive rebounding. We've been <coughs> actually pretty good overall at making people miss, but just becoming elite. And I've told our team, it's not, I think we're capable. It's what are the little things that we're willing to do consistently to be really, really good. And that for us is number one, actually, Bruce, we, we've got to take care of the basketball better so we can really squeeze down and really limit transition baskets, the easiest baskets they can get. And then the three-point field goal is such an equalizer in basketball. We just can't let people get going. And we've had a number of games where we've made people miss. Uh, this next game is going to be a major challenge in that. But keeping people away from just drilling three-point shots, that, that hurt us the last two games. Coach, what have you learned about your team so far? And what do you want to see before you start conference play coming up? <coughs> Well, first thing is, I, I really enjoy this group. They, they are, um, you know, we've got this youthful enthusiasm about us, and there's so many things that, that we don't know what we don't know. Um, but they're learning, and they're growing, and we're going through stuff. We knew there was going to be some growing pains. Um, but I really like the makeup of these guys. Um, you know, the things that we've got to get better at, Chris, are – just becoming more consistent. We, we say it all the time, and I'll, I'll say it all the time, is to, to be great is to be consistently really good. It's not to be awesome one day and then average the next. It's we've just got to be more consistent and really understand uh, the things that we can control best 
and go out and execute those to the best of our ability every single game. And then knowing that adversity is going to strike one way or the other. There's so many different ways it can happen, and we've got to be able to bounce back quickly. Coach, I know that you don't want to, in general, talk about a game that's not your next game. But on Sunday, you do play Oklahoma State. It's going to be the second of the of the three other Division One schools that you play this year. How important is it for your team and your program to play other schools in the state that are Division One? Yeah, we love it. Um, we love the idea of playing regional games. Of course, you start within the state. You start with teams that have. Uh, for our fan base, uh, a tradition and a historic relevance um, across many sports. It's just, you know, people that you know. So there's so many different positives about that, even in proximity of our fans from Tulsa being able to travel someplace close. That's why we've also, you know, we did the series with Little Rock. We did the series with Missouri State. Um, this is part of a three-year deal with Oklahoma State. So we want those types of games where it's, close for us to travel to. It's also close for our fans to travel to. But then also, this state has great basketball history. And we're a big part of that. We want to continue to be a big part of that. And I think a big way of doing that is play teams within your state.